Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at the extraction of iron from iron ore. We'll be looking at the chemical reactions and the processes that take place in the blast furnace. So stay tuned. First, let's look at the general concept of metal ores, what they are and how extraction takes place. Metal ores are just rocks from which metals can be obtained. Rocks which contain metal compounds. Most metals are reactive and they don't exist in the pure form. The only metals that exist as elemental state are gold and silver most of the time. And the other metals normally exist as compounds because they would have reacted to form oxides, sulfides, carbonates and so on. So most metals exist as compounds. These are some of the metals that exist naturally. Iron 3 oxide, triiron tetroxide, this is magnetite, this is hematite, aluminium oxide is bauxite and tin 4 oxide, cassiterite. Now these words in red are the ores, that means they are the rocks. For example, hematite is a rock which contains iron 3 oxide. Magnetite is a rock which contains triiron tetroxide. So these are how they exist naturally in nature. So we are not interested in the compounds, in the metal compounds. What we want is the metal itself. And the process of getting the metal from this ore is what we call the extraction of metals. Extraction can be done using several methods. It depends which is the most practical and of course which is the cheapest. And metal compounds are reduced to metals. So when they exist in compounds and finally they become the elemental state, they will always be reduced. If you're not sure about oxidation and reduction, the video link is at the corner. So the methods for extraction generally here, we're only looking at two. The electrolysis of metal compounds in a molten state. One is done using electrolysis. This method is used for metals that are more reactive than carbon. So back to the reactivity series of metal, I've done several videos on the reactivity series of metal all of them are at the corner the links to all videos are at the corner so look at this reactivity series of metal all the metals that are more reactive than carbon this is the position of carbon more reactive than carbon means they are higher than carbon in the reactivity series of metal so potassium sodium calcium magnesium and aluminium if we were to obtain any of these from their compounds then we will be using electrolysis we cannot use the second method that is heating with carbon Heating with carbon is preferable because carbon is abundant and it is cheaper. It is cheaper than electrolysis. Electrolysis is very expensive because the electricity needed to conduct the electrolysis is very expensive. So this is the preferred method. And when we heat with carbon, it needs to be metals that are less reactive than carbon. That means metals that are lower than carbon in the reactivity series of metals downwards from zinc. This is a cheaper method and the principle is the same as when we were looking for the position of carbon in the reactivity series of metal. That is, carbon is more reactive than these metals and therefore we'll be able to displace them from their metal compounds. Now let's look at iron. The extraction of iron is conducted in a blast furnace. This is a blast furnace. But what is happening here is hot air is blasted from the bottom. Therefore, blast furnace. Hot air is blasted from the bottom here, upwards, and then the raw materials are added from the top here. So the raw materials involved here are hematite or magnetite. Depends on which ore we are extracting iron from. Here is hematite. A hematite contains iron 3 oxide. It also has impurities. Hematite is the rock. The rock that contains iron 3 oxide. So of course, it being a rock, it contains many other things. And mostly, sand. And then we have coke. Coke is a preparation of carbon. It consists of 80% of carbon. It's mostly carbon. So you treat coke here as carbon. And then we have calcium carbonate, limestone. Limestone is calcium carbonate. So these three raw materials are added into the blast furnace from the top. Hot air is being blown from the bottom. And therefore, the hottest region in this blast furnace is at the bottom because this is where the hot air is coming in. As it goes up, it loses heat, so the temperature decreases as it goes up. This is the hottest region and this is the coolest region. 
So the first step here is carbon. This carbon, remember, came from coke. The carbon reacts with oxygen from the air, the hot air that is blown in. Carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. This is the first step. This is at the bottom where it is hottest. And then due to the heat, the limestone, calcium carbonate, will also break down. Limestone breaks down into calcium oxide, which is also called quick lime, and carbon dioxide. So the first stage is all about carbon dioxide production. However, carbon dioxide here has little use because carbon dioxide cannot be oxidized further. That means it cannot act as a reducing agent. Remember the goal in the extraction here is to reduce the oxide of iron, iron tree oxide, to iron. So we need a reducing agent. Here carbon dioxide cannot act as a reducing agent because it's not going to be oxidized anymore. However, the next step here, higher up here, carbon reacts with carbon dioxide to form carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide can act as a reducing agent because it can be oxidized to carbon dioxide. So at the lower region, carbon dioxide is produced and then limestone also breaks down to quick lime and carbon dioxide. And then at the cooler region up here, there is carbon monoxide production. Carbon reacts with carbon dioxide to produce carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide will react with the iron tree oxide to form iron and carbon dioxide gas. Notice here, iron is in the liquid form. Because of the high temperatures inside the blast furnace, iron has already melted. So it is in the liquid form and iron will drop down here to the bottom to form molten iron and molten iron is then drained out. So this is where we get our iron. And then carbon dioxide is produced. This carbon dioxide here is a waste gas. So this is one of the waste products in this process. And then at the bottom here where, the, where it is hotter, iron tree oxide reacts directly with carbon. Carbon itself. This carbon, remember, came from the coke. So iron tree oxide reacts with carbon to form iron again in the liquid form. Here, molten iron drops to the bottom and is drained out and carbon monoxide. Here we have carbon monoxide. In this process, carbon monoxide and carbon are both oxidized. Carbon monoxide is oxidized to carbon dioxide. Carbon is oxidized to carbon monoxide. Since carbon monoxide and carbon are oxidized here, then they act as the reducing agents to reduce the iron tree oxide. So iron tree oxide is reduced to iron. So since it is reduced, it acts as the oxidizing agent here. So this is the process from which you can see we started with iron tree oxide. Now it has been reduced to iron, which is what we want. This we have extracted iron from iron tree oxide. Now what about the impurities? So the impurities that exist is mostly sand. Because remember, the ores are rocks, so they contain mostly sand. So what happens to the sand? Sand, silicon dioxide or silica, this is sand reacts with the quick quick lime earlier remember the limestone was broken down to quick lime and carbon dioxide so this is where quick lime comes in quick lime reacts with silica to form calcium silicate which is known as slag and slag is less dense than the molten iron so it will float above the molten iron and this is drained off this impurity is drained off drained away up here so this molten iron is what we want and this slag in the impurity is drained off. It will float above the molten iron. And this is how we end up from the iron ore all the way to pure iron. And of course, the iron that we obtain here is not really pure. It's not 100% iron. There will, it will contain some carbon as well. But this is the extraction process of iron from hematite. The same process is used for magnetite as well using a blast furnace. And since iron's position is lower than carbon in the reactivity series of metal, we are able to use this method. We are able to use carbon as the reducing agent here. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do hit the like button. It really does support me and my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.